would you like to share with us about your death experience? You touched on it. Would yeah. You? Yes. I, oops. I was on a mission trip with um, Bishop Jakes. We'd been around the world. Actually, we came to Kenya Yes, that together. time he came, yes. That time he came. Mm -hmm. We came together. And then um, one of his sons fell ill, so he had to leave in a hurry. So actually, I had to take some of his meetings that had been lined up. And then didn't go back to London. I just dashed down to Dallas, naturally, just to make sure everything's OK. So I was with him. And then on the 22nd of December, 2004, I remember the date like yesterday, I was on a flight back to London from Dallas, looking forward to, yeah, going home just yes, before Christmas, Christmas, miss my family, yeah. and then church and the usual activities. Got on the plane, it's night flight. And I lie down, recline the seat. It's a nine-hour flight. I'm thinking, yes, I was rest and sleep and get ready. <laughs> and I'm all, I wasn't fasting. I ate. So it must have been 45 minutes, an hour into the flight. Recline my seat, cover myself with a blanket. And then this unusual presence comes into the plane. Enough for me to open my eyes. I'm just... I, can't explain it, I just opened my eyes. And then I yeah. am, Kathy, looking at an angel mm. leaning over me. I wasn't sleeping, I was wide awake. I'm looking at this angel, and the angel says to me, it's time to go. Two, three words. And I knew immediately what it meant. So I say back to the angel, but I'm not ready. Another two, three words. And then the angel says to me, it's not for you to determine but the one who sent me, and grabs me by the hand, leans over, grabs me by the hand, and pulls me out of the seat of the plane. Now, when I come up out of my seat, it was natural. I didn't feel pain. It's just that I look back, and my physical frame is on the seat of the plane. Mm. And then I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying. I knew who I was. I wasn't disoriented. I knew who my wife was. I knew who my kids were. I knew I was the pastor of the church. I knew where I was coming from, where I was going. I'm dying. And then I'm thinking, I'm not ready for this. What will happen? And then the angel, I look around the cabin of the plane. There were two other people all in the cabin. I was flying first class that night. So there were four or five other people in the cabin of the plane. And then the angel pushes me gently, and I enter into a tunnel out of the plane. I'm conscious of the angel behind mm -hmm. me. I'm going down, and I have this overriding sense of what will happen to my kids, what will happen to my wife, what about the church. Yeah. I imagined um, them taking my body out of the plane when the plane lands in England. But gradually, as we drift down the mm. tunnel, those thoughts get to be distant. And I suddenly am overwhelmed with a, a consciousness of assignment. Mm. And this hard to describe sense of assignment hit me. Um, Jesus said, and without wanting to preach, Jesus yeah. said, I come according as it is written concerning me in the volume of the books to do your will. And the whole purpose of life is to do the will of God, um, not to marry, not to have kids, but to do the will of God. And as we travel down the tunnel, I become acutely aware of purpose and then regret creeps my soul in words that cannot be described. Gravity was lifted off my thoughts. When I say this thing, sometimes I almost start tearing mm. because it's as real as it was yesterday. And I could remember everything. If you said 2 p.m. on the 3rd of June, 1974, I would remember what I did, where I was, what I was doing, what somebody did, yeah. I remembered everything. And the gripping thing about it is I remembered lost opportunities to serve God, lost opportunities to win souls, lost opportunities to feed the hungry. It was overwhelming. And then as I drift along, the angel is still behind me. We come up against this membrane, and I kind of knew it was a point of no return. I just knew it. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me how. Yeah. And the angel pushes me through the membrane and something 
that I am yet to find the words to describe happened. I saw eternity and the expanse of eternity in comparison to time, and I broke down a pastor in excruciating pain, mental and emotional pain. I regretted it. The, the word regret does not carry the weight mm. of it. I saw the expanse of eternity and realized that time is infinitesimally minute and incomparable to eternity and that it's an unfair advantage that God gives us time mm. to invest in eternity. So you have 70 years, 20 years, 30 years, oh, he lived long, he lived short. Yeah. But in the comparison of eternity, there's no difference between 10 years and 70 years. Uh none whatsoever in comparison right. to eternity. And I leaned over. I, 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 I knew I was born again, which is the other thing. When a man dies, I'm not afraid of death because the experience of salvation travels mm. in death. So I came out of my body and I knew I was born again. That wasn't the issue. The issue was what did I do with my life? And then I wept and said, God, give me three days. My God. I, I, I lamented, give me three days. Amazing. Not three days to travel first mm -hmm. class. Not three days to be the big man of God. Not three days to be on a billboard. Yeah. Not three days to be on TV. Not three days to be with my wife. No. Three days to fulfill my dream. I just give me three days to make investments. Give me three days. Let me just go back. Three days. Mm. I promise you those three days, I'll do damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, that I lament. And when suddenly this powerful force mm. pulled me back out through the membrane, all the way up the tunnel, back into the cabin of the plane, and my body was still there. By this time, they'd switched off the lights in mm -hmm. the cabin and all of that. Um, how long I was in that time, yeah. in time, yeah. I have no idea, to be honest. And the angel pushes me back into my body. So I get back into my body and I'm gasping and choking. Almost the experience a baby has mm. when they are born. I sit up and I, I struggled to first sit up. I was in fear. I thought, is this a dream? Did this really happen? It, I knew it did happen, mm. but I was in shock. And the angel appeared again and sat in front of me and said, let me talk to you and explain what's just happened. Otherwise, your mind will delete it mm. and you will come to the conclusion, I just had a bad dream. Right. And spoke to me for till the next time, what I knew next is the pilot said, we have 45 minutes to land it. So I must have been in conversation with that angel for what, five hours, six yes. hours, and I didn't realize it. He told me about life, told me about destiny, told me about assignment, told me that um, 30 years or 70 years don't matter, that live long is not the chrono chronological clock, it is content, mm. and that a dog's lifespan is six years, an elephant's lifespan is 80 years. So a dog lives six years and lives long, and that it's not about the length, it's the content that Methuselah, the angel told me, Methuselah lived 900 and something years, and yet it says in the scriptures, he lived, he married, he had children, and he died. Hmm. 900 years. Jesus lived 30 years, and it is written, no book can contain. So he told me, whatever years you live, don't weep over a short or long life, weep over the content of your life. And just before the angel left, it now said, I know when this is over, you will convince yourself this never happened. I am going to give you a sign. Mm -hmm. In one or two days time, hundreds of thousands of people will die. When it happens, you will remember. So I arrive in London, I think on a Friday. On Sunday, I'm preaching in church. And I announce that this is what happened to me. This is what the angel said, pray for me. Thank God I did. We get home that Sunday and the tsunami of 2004 happened and hundreds of thousands. And I wept in my living room at home. So since 2004 till now, yeah. 
I have committed myself completely. Mm. And I think it has strongly influenced my disposition towards yes. ministry. It's not about what people think is important. And I asked for three days, 2040 now is a lot more than yeah. three days. Yeah. And every day, this morning the same, I wake up and I say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Another day to make an investment in eternity. Mm. Mm. So that's my story, 2004. That, that is the story. <laughs> <laughs> that is the story. Because then after that, everything became meaningful. Yes. Yes. My whole life took a different turn. I told God, I'm so sorry for arguing with you about medicine. I'm so sorry for arguing with you about yes. being a pastor. You yes. know, I, I, I committed myself to God afresh personally. So it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what you do or don't do. For me, I do it as on to mm. God. And I'm, I'm grateful every day. I don't have time for bitterness. Yeah. I don't have time for anger. Yeah. I don't have time for... I, I'm just like, you know, I'm alive. Hey, yeah. another day. Yeah. Um, and, and I tell people that you rarely talk to people who came back from the grave. Mm. Came back from the dead. So I said, I'm telling you now. And when I give altar calls, I give it with passion. Yes. Like, hey, guys. Yes. <laughs> yes. You don't want to do this.